Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome back to Imagination Tech. So if you've ever thought of experimenting with 18650 battery packs, you should know that you shouldn't use a soldering iron on them. The heat from a soldering iron transfers very quickly to the 18650 cell and causes damage to it. So what you should use is something called a spot welder. But the problem is a spot welder normally costs $100 or more. So today I'm going to be taking a look at this DIY portable spot welder and to see if it's actually any good. Just so you know if you're new to the channel, I normally post videos of FPV quads, uh, builds, reviews of anything related to the FPV uh, multi-rotor hobby. But uh, I'm going to be creating a separate playlist for everything else such as this DIY portable spot welder, um, 18650 battery packs and some more new stuff that I plan to uh, shoot for this channel. Right, so do, do check them out in the links and uh, stay tuned for this review. So this is the DIY 12 volt portable spot welder, which which isn't really its name, but more like uh, you know permutations of the keywords that were that was used to you know to post this on Banggood, on AliExpress, on uh, Lazada, on Shopee, on practically any Chinese uh, any Chinese website or any or, or any of those uh, online shopping websites. So taking a look at the contents of this box, we see. That there are two uh, spot welding pens. Obviously, I do not want to hold them like this. These are made of copper, I think. I'm I'm hoping they are made of made of copper, pure copper. Um, these are some wires, which I guess this would go to your uh, battery leads. And uh, actually, I was quite surprised because uh, the pictures. I uh, wasn't quite sure how thick these wires would be uh, based on the pictures but I'm really happy that they are this thick because they really need to be able to carry uh, a high enough high enough amount of current. So you got a, this bag of um, you know hardware like the nuts, the screws, uh, there's a speaker over there, a capacitor and a uh, long piece, two, two pieces of uh, really long heat shrink and I would guess uh, you would use this I'm not, I'm not sure why they, they didn't put this in the first place, but uh, you would slide this over here. Um, and then you would just uh, heat that with a with a hot hot air gun or a, you know a dryer or even um, in the oven, and it's going to shrink to uh, to conform to this uh, this pen. And at least now you have an insulated handle for this thing. And finally, of course, uh, we have this uh, the board. So this is the board and this is where all of the action takes place. So the recommended battery to use for this is either a 12 volt lead acid battery or a um, you know a 3S LiPo battery that can deliver around 45C I think, uh, 5000 milliamp uh, hour 45C battery or any, anything that can supply 90 amps to 150 amps of, uh, of current. So. Um, I don't. Th I'm not sure if I have any. Uh, I, th I think I can fashion some 3S lipos uh, for that, or I would probably discharge one of my 4S down to 14.6 volts. But that doesn't leave too much power. Anyway, we'll uh, give that a try. So this is a DIY kit, which means you have to assemble everything yourself. So um, what you would do here is you would put um, one of the screws there, um, and in this case, this is the out, right? Okay, so. Um, you would take one of these uh, pen pen leads and then just screw them in over there. So it's good that uh, they already crimped this uh, for for you know for these copper pen tips. However, for the battery input leads, they you know they just gave you some wires. They just give gave you the 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 hook connectors or I forgot what this is called but they just gave that to you and uh, you're supposed to do it yourself which is why this is called a DIY kit um, not sure why they wouldn't just you know just like this crimp these uh, these onto the wires and um, you also would need a soldering iron so that you would you would be able to solder these uh, this buzzer on here and the capacitor goes over here um, take note of the polarity. There is a positive. There is a positive sign here. There is also a positive sign here for the capacitor. So, uh, so just to make sure that you don't uh, you don't put 
oops you don't put them in reverse okay so you would need a soldering iron for that if you do not have a soldering iron then I don't think you would have any business using this uh, in the first place so um, I am sure anyone who needs this DIY, DIY portable spot welder would also have a soldering iron in their uh, toolbox so once you've soldered the capacitor and the buzzer and uh, crimped the battery leads together um, all you need to do is just uh, put them onto their respective bolts and holes and just tighten these bolts and uh, and you're done. So uh, you might have noticed that the, the positive lead of the battery is directly connected to one of the uh, spot welding terminals or spot welding tips. Oops, this needs to be tightened a lot more. Probably do that a little bit later. So, and, uh, so the circuit basically, what it does is it uh, detects if you uh, if if there's a little enough resistance, and once you touch both of them onto this nickel plate, uh, the circuit is going to basically just close the circuit from uh, from the negative lead of the battery and the negative lead of one of the spot welding welding tips, and just let the whole let, let the current flow through everything um, effectively, you know, um, energizing the spot welder and welding the spot basically. So let's go ahead and you know try this out. All right, so here now I have a 4S battery and uh, this is discharged to 14.3 volts. So this is enough to power this and safe enough to power this without you know burning up the circuitry. But we don't know if it's going to be enough to actually do a spot weld. But anyway, let's just plug this in. So you heard there was a beep and to turn this on you, you need to hold the button here. Okay, so you need uh, Okay. See. Hmm. Okay, so it's blinking green. If you hold it for 1.5 seconds, it should turn blue. Or that didn't turn blue. Okay, so once it's red, your uh, this is supposed to be uh, high power mode. Okay, so uh, I think we are in high power mode. Um, well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, so let's just hold one and then. Okay, that didn't seem to work. I felt I felt a relay go off, but uh, I'm not sure if my battery has enough power to do the spot weld itself. Let's just try that again. So I did feel something. So you can see that there are spots over there. Um, yeah, it did melt. It did melt it a little bit. So maybe we should be trying some, uh, this with something that has a little bit more capacity because maybe this battery is really bad. All right, right now um, I'm gonna try using two 4S batteries that are a bit uh, low on charge. So they are uh, in parallel. So that will give me twice the amps. Should be more than what I need. And these are already at 14.6. So I'm just going to be um, hooking them up to our power board. Let's turn that on again. So again, we hold the button I really can't figure this out yet. Okay, so it's blinking green. I think that's <laughs> means it's turned on. I'm not really quite sure. But let's try this again. Okay. Damn it. Let's turn that off. Okay, so word of warning: be careful that uh, your your welding uh, welding needles or welding welding pens don't touch each other. But uh, otherwise, um, it did stick a little bit. Um, probably we should um, raise it to uh, change it to red, so that it gives us more power. But definitely, we can power this off of two four S lipos that are. That have low charge 
and uh, but I think uh, a fully charged 3S LiPo with a high enough uh, milliamp hour rating should be should perform even better now with that putting pressure on that let's let's give it a try oh did you see that spark it threw a spark and it is there it is on there really good oh maybe not as good as i thought Okay. okay, if you can see it, it did uh, weld that on there quite good, quite nicely. It's not going anywhere. Let's just hold that, turn it off. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's off. So, my weld it on uh, a couple of times to really get a secure 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 weld now we're going to try it with this 3s battery which is fully charged and we'll see if it performs any better than the two almost drained 4s batteries and uh, we will give it a try okay so once again need to figure out what to press i still can't figure this out let's try it with this second battery well, it did give a really nice spark. And again, be careful with those needles. So I think that's a very, very solid, uh, solid weld. Um, so I think either way you can use a, um, you, you can use a 4S, that's one 4S that's uh, low battery. Um, it's going to deliver a very, very low current, but I think um, for reliability and portability, it's, you're better off using a 3S battery or a lead acid battery. But uh, yeah, this is much smaller, and um, you know each weld that you do doesn't even consume that much uh, that much much power, not that much current. It's a very uh, fast, um, just uses uh, a few milliseconds worth of uh, power. So I think uh, even a, th a 1300 milliamp hour battery like this would lasts you quite a long time. I've made a holder for my welding needles by just using a hot glue and uh, positioning my, my two needles together and just, just applying hot glue all over. And uh, I've uh, made it so that the pins are just right uh, at the right distance that I need them to be. And, uh, but, I, but it's still a little bit flexible, so if I need to uh, make, him, make them wider or uh, narrower, I can do that easily. And this makes it a lot easier. I can, I can uh, do spot welding using just one hand, uh, but I still use two hands. Uh, but uh, it really does make uh, things faster, make, make positioning uh, much easier and, and faster. And uh, sometimes simpler, a simpler solution is better. I was initially thinking of creating a 3D printed mount, but uh, yeah, hot glue does the job. It probably does the job even better better than if I made a TPU mount for this. All right, so after using the DIY portable spot welder for a while, I was able to get uh, good consistent results and I was able, able to make these two 5S 3P battery packs, which I'll be combining into one large 10S pack. So at first I was getting a lot of nice sparks, which uh, while they were really beautiful to look at, they were actually just burning through the nickel strip. So the DIY portable spot welder has a cycle of about half a second and you want to make sure that your needles are firmly placed on the nickel strip as well as the 18650 battery before the needles energize so you get a good spot weld. And I use around three to four spot welds on each uh, 18650 cell, uh, which gives me a good, uh, good grip on those uh, batteries. I've also been able to get more consistent results with a 3S battery that's fully charged because once, they, once the voltage dips down to 12 volts or less, then um, it's, it's hit or miss. It's, uh, it doesn't deliver enough energy to do a proper spot weld. So um, yeah, make sure that you don't go below 12 volts for uh, if you're using a 3S battery. I'm not sure how long this uh, DIY portable spot, spot welder is going to last, but compared to a $100 spot welder, um, this is perfect for you know for for hobby use and for $20 $25 you can't go wrong uh, you might as well give it a try and I will leave a link to the description if you want to try it yourself uh, I would like to hear your opinions about this DIY portable spot welder so do leave them in the comments and um, you know I make a lot of videos but they're mostly related to FPV quads builds hacks and flights so I will have there uh, I'll have a uh, separate playlist for these kinds of videos so um, 
do check them out as well. All right, so if you like this video, make sure you click, click on that like button and make sure you're subscribed. All right, so as always, keep building and keep flying.